morning and welcome. Pizza Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason on this Monday. Man, wrapping up April already. Where does the time go? Uh, all kinds of stuff. I was gone on Friday. My, bu- my buddy Homer, some of you may remember my buddy Homer. Uh, his daughter got married, and uh, we were in North Carolina. Never been. Well, I've been to the airport in North Carolina, but never actually been to North Carolina. Uh, right out, right outside Charlotte. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, I can imagine it being pretty humid in in the uh, in the summertime. But at least we, the, the weather was just about right for while well, we were there. And uh, nice city. I'll say this. Uh, Charlotte's a nice city, no doubt about it. Uh, big, big uh, financial banking hub there uh, in Charlotte. Uh, so uh, we we were there for that. Uh, we're back on the, the draft, the NFL draft. How did your team do? You know, I love it with all these animals. Oh, these guys nailed the draft, and then the, 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 oh, they these guys oh they they bombed it. They don't know. They don't know, right? They you know they're they're all just. Kind of guessing, but you know, if your if your team had a rough year last year, uh, the draft always gives you hope, right? It gives you hope that hey, next year it's going to be a better year. Uh, NBA playoffs or the I'll tell you this, I'm glad the Suns are out. Good, because that way that means I don't got to watch them, right? They they just uh, got swept up and swept out, and now uh, Devers got a chance, right? Wrap it up here against the Lakers, right? Uh, but uh, other than that, the the, uh, the the rest of the world, we had a bank closure over the weekend. Uh, the FDIC taking over bank. We also had a bank merger, which I think we're going to start hearing a lot about these. See, see, mergers are better than closures, aren't they? Because they sound better. Oh no, no, we're not, we're not being taken over, right? Well, we're, we're just merging. Uh, UMB and, and Heartland uh, are becoming uh, one and the same. And I know one of them has uh, operations in in Colorado, uh, but this is going to be again trying to get big enough. Uh, this will put uh, UMB just under, not quite, not quite to a hundred billion dollars in assets, but uh, getting bigger here. As once again, I think this is Jason. We're, we're going to see a lot more of this. Uh, the the uh, the institution in Philadelphia that went under over the weekend. Th- these were these smaller banks. Now we're going to start seeing. I think. A lot of the smaller banks either get gobbled up or get uh, just disappear. Republic first. Uh, this was seized by the FDIC. Uh, it's going to be bought by a, comp- by a bank called Fullerton Bank. It's going to cost, I don't know, about a, maybe a billion dollars, maybe. This was a bank they had $6 billion worth of assets. But, again, it's slow-moving. This isn't uh, a big enough bank yet for it to matter. The problem will be, how many of these little banks will it take to equal one of the big banks? Yeah, Joe, and and uh, it's just it still seems like it's going in slow motion too a little bit, doesn't it? Just it, we see it, we watch it happening. And I think there's a lot of people that in this industry know it's going to happen, and I think a lot of these guys know it's going to happen to them. Not you know maybe not a lot of them, but some of them. And uh, yeah, uh, how many banks for a big bank, George? <laughs> a lot, isn't it? Take a lot. You got to take a lot of banks. But uh, let, let's see. We'll see what happens. I mean, if you feel like it's, uh, feel like it's a when it comes to the banks, it's uh, and even the uh, the private businesses, it's like a bunch of people just stranded out in the ocean, and and, and, and the inflation is just moving the water higher and higher, and you're just going to see who's going to make it, right? Who's going to make it to the life raft? Who's, who's going to get pulled out of the water just in time? Can we, can inf- we get by, right? Can we survive? Up. Yep. 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 we got a busy week yep. this week. we got a Fed meeting. Uh, we've got Treasury. Uh, this is going to be a, and something we're going to talk about, the Treasury refunding. Uh, we're also going to have jobs data because it's going to be uh, the beginning of May, so we'll get – uh, uh, jobs data this week. We've got ISM. We got jolts. We got tons of earnings. So it's going to be a very, very active week. The one thing that everybody's expecting is going to be uh, the Federal Reserve 
talking about slowing the pace of quantitative tightening. This goes hand in hand with the Treasury refunding. So what is Treasury refunding? This is where the Treasury, remember what the Treasury's been doing. Oh, we got to sell more debt. We got to increase the size of auctions. There's too much debt coming available. The only way that the Treasury is going to be able to say we don't have to auction, make auctions even bigger, is Jason, is for the Fed to, to start start selling less of their balance sheet off. And I think that's kind of the plan. They're hoping that maybe uh, they won't have to increase the size of the auctions until 2025 as the Fed winds down quantitative tightening in 2024. And I guess the problem with that, right, is if the Fed doesn't, wind it down because inflation keeps getting hotter uh th then the treasury is going to have a uh, have a problem it's the same old song we've been saying in a couple right. for several years now that's just the way it is i mean and if the debt wasn't 35 trillion there would be room to play as you said how many hundreds of times the last bunch of years but there's there's they're walking the tightrope and they're trying to see if they can please both sides of this thing and it, i think what that's where the slow motion crash comes from you just kind of let both sides die at the same time slowly yep yep they're gonna auction off uh, another 125 billion try to fatten up uh the treasury's checkbook and then hope and i'm sure listen we say hope the fed and the treasury they've already told each other right what they're gonna do uh, but that's going to be, like I said, a lot of key data points. I think we're going to see probably a little more aggressive uh, cutting of the quantitative tightening, which I think can spur gold. So we'll see what happens. We'll be right back. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour here on this Monday. And uh, a quick look in at the markets. The Dow's up 70. The S&P's up 12. The Nasdaq's up 40. The 10-year note down to 462. Crazy moves. I mean, it's really interesting to watch. Uh, the 10-year note moved like a meme stock. The Japanese yet looks like there was intervention today by the Bank of Japan uh, on on the Japanese yen today. Crude oil's down a dollar because, uh, I don't know, somebody's in the Middle East today. Yes, yeah, so we're going to try to get a ceasefire. Okay, sure. Uh, gold, pretty flat, up a dollar. Uh, silver, same thing, pretty flat a as well. Uh, the, the news of the day, uh, probably the Japanese yen, which broke 160 uh, right now at 156. These are huge moves. Uh, currencies, treasuries, they're not supposed to move like like they're, they've been moving. But again, this is just another one uh, <clears> of <throat> those those indicators of the financial stress that's really out in the markets, just under the surface. And that's why we call it, you know, this is the year of chaos. Like I said, I think this year is still, it, 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 I mean, already there's been plenty of chaos. I'm more worried about what happens after the chaos, and I think that's when we start seeing it all fall apart. What's coming next year, the year after, the year after that, and, and getting ready. That's why we keep telling you, uh, be more diversified here. Get your gold, get your silver, keep adding to your portfolios. If you haven't started, what are you waiting for? Right? I don't get it, right? What are you waiting for? Uh, but be even more diversified. Check out our friends at Y Refi. You can get up to 10.25% fixed rate of return, not correlated to Wall Street. Doesn't care. I mean, that would be kind of nice. Wouldn't it be nice to know, hey, well, this happened or that happened or, or oh, my gosh, you know, World War Three happened. Hey, but I've got this part of my portfolio. I know exactly what I'm going to get. I can turn it in my hand. I can use it as income. I can compound it. You can do whatever you choose to do. Uh, check them out. Invest. YRefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R E F Y.com. Remember, you got to have a minimum of at least $50,000 or just call them. Invest, YRefi.com, 888 YRefi24. 
there was an article out with the former comptroller uh, of the currency uh, and talking about uh, what is going on financially with the United States. David Walker, you guys may remember him. We used to talk about him quite a bit. Gosh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. In 2007, do you know the national debt was below $10 trillion? So here we are uh, in 2024. So you think about, well, gosh, that's what, 17 years? And we're at, essentially, I think next week we're going to hit $35 trillion. Right, so we're, we, we look at what we've done in that short of a time. By the end of the year, uh, what is that number going to be? Thirty-seven, right? Thirty-seven trillion. You know, you're, you're talking about, but, but I mean, you're within a whisper of adding thirty trillion dollars. And really, if you count the Fed's balance sheet, because that's got to count. They pretend like it doesn't count. I don't know why does that not count, right? Why does that? Die? Of course, it counts. So, really, what are we at? We're already over forty trillion. We've added thirty trillion dollars. I mean, really, by the end of the year, we've been adding two trillion dollars of debt for a long time. The budget deficit, wow, was a hundred and sixty billion dollars. What? A hundred and sixty. We do that in like a month. That's not. That's nothing. Right, a month, a month. I'm being kind. We probably do. We probably do that. In a, in, that's one bad weekend, Jason. That's one bad weekend uh, when we look about how much federal debt really is being added. I think most people are completely uh, blind to to the, how big this bubble really is. Well, and once again, uh, the, the trade deficit is a lot to do with dollars leaving to buy products to bring into the country. And as everything is inflated, that deficit has to get worse, Joe, because, you know, to get uh, weird plastic gadgets from China to put into Walmart so people can buy them, uh, they're costing, you know, instead of the $2 gadget, now it's $4, then it's a $5 gadget. And if you add all that up, that percentage, uh, the, the trade deficit probably is going to get a lot worse. You know, that's going to be a whole lot more spending and dollars going out, which I guess is kind of a good thing. Maybe, Joe, when the deficit gets smaller, maybe that's the bad thing. That means we're, uh, nobody's taking dollars anymore. The trade trade deficit, it's it's a little bit hidden, the, the information there. It's, it's, it's almost like, well, at least somebody's still taking dollars going out. <laughs> right, Joe? It's, it's, uh, it's showing us that somebody is, is uh, accepting dollars, but uh, for how long, Joe? Right? For how long? Yeah, and, and that's going to be the thing. When, when, uh, when David Walker was talking, he's like, where's the tipping point? Right? Where is it? And when we, we look at what's been happening in the Treasury markets, look at what we just said in the first segment. The only reason that the Treasury is going to be able to stop increasing the size of auctions, which are already outrageously high, is if the Fed stops selling its balance sheet. Right? That that balance sheet that's uh, what... Uh, just under eight trillion, you know, seven point eight, seven point seven trillion dollars. Most of that in treasury debt. And here's the problem. Okay, so they stop, right? Let's just say they take the rest of the year. They they wind it down. So at, at first, who knows what they'll come out with this week, right? Maybe they'll say, hey, we're going to cut back instead of ninety five billion dollars a month. We're going to sell 75 or 65, and then they'll gradually, you know, a couple of meetings later. Okay, we're going to sell, we're going to take it down to, to 50 or 40, and then okay. And by the end of the year, they stop selling it altogether. Here's the problem: by the end of the year, even them going. 95 billion dollars now granted it's not all treasuries i think like 60 billion of it a, a month think about that 60 billion a month let's just say it runs out by the end of this year the treasury at the end of the year jason 
they're still going to have to expand their balance sheet because even that, that's all fast. Okay, well, that was only $60 billion. That's not enough, right? $60 billion a month. So you know what? We've got to sell more than that. Interest on the debt's not going to stop growing the way it's, it's headed. <laughs> they have to, pay, you know, they're they're most afraid the government of of uh, default uh, of bankruptcy. At least at least a, a normal traditional hey we can't pay our bills bankruptcy because America's got the uh, the full faith and credit of the United States government. It's the best in the whole world, and so. Uh, the interest on the debt's not going to stop. So they're going to have to sell that stuff, Joe. They're going to have to. They have to pay. For, even if they stop spending money on all the other programs, what a budget just for the interest on the debt, Joe. Yeah, and what does that mean? What is the effect? Well, how about sticker shock uh, out, out of California, as an example? Of course, we know about their new minimum wage law and uh, prices from Chick-fil-A to McDonald's to Burger King. You know McDonald's has raised prices 100% in the last 10 years? 100%. That's from McDonald's. I mean, that's 10% a year, right? Nowhere close to the inflation that they're always talking about. But this guy, he was talking, uh, Seth Adamans his name. He was in L.A., Earlier this week, well, last week, I guess, he's a 39-year-old therapist. Said his usual $16 meal that he picks up weekly at the Chick-fil-A in Hollywood, California, is now 20 Okay, so th- this is fast food, and you're paying $20 for whatever his usual meal was from, from 16 Right, so that's a four dollar increase. That's a twenty five percent increase. It's a spiky, uh, a spicy chicken sandwich, which used to cost six twenty nine, is now seven oh nine, according to uh, Chick Fil A. Which Chick Fil A is saying they're trying to hold prices in 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 California. A from this is from Chipotle. Listen to this. A double steak bowl. Now, I have no idea what that is. So what? A steak bowl, double meat. $17 in Nevada is $39 in California. I mean, can you imagine going to Chipotle and you're ordered just for you and it's $39? Jason, this is the kind of thing that, that we're talking about. Remember remember when you'd go to the fast food place and, and, and it was maybe five bucks, right? Then, then it went to 10. Now, now we're talking about 20. Oh, my God, you want double meat? How about $40? This is what's going to happen. And, and, and people are starting to see it. We may not be California yet, but it's coming. <laughs> I'm trying to find the source of something I'm looking at here, but... Quarter pounder with cheese for nine ninety nine. <laughs> new new prices in California, but it it won't say where. I'm not trying to read where it's at, but uh, you know, because unlike some of their other products, uh, a couple that are you know the uh, Big Mac and the quarter pounder they actually use you know one hundred percent beef and they have different vegetables on it, so it's a little pricier than like a double cheese. Their double cheeseburger now, Joe, uh, three seventy nine. <laughs> It used to be like a buck, you know, for that low quality stuff. That was a value. That was a dollar menu item forever. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, the nine ninety nine. There's it's on Reddit. These people are complaining. Why are we having to pay nine ninety nine for a quarter pounder with cheese? And and uh, I, you know what? It is kind of interesting. I mean, you go twenty years back. I mean, nobody would people their heads would explode if you heard that. And now it's like something that people are going to have to get used to. Yeah, and this is, and again, this is a microcosm of too many dollars. Uh, people aren't listening. You know what? You're, people aren't figuring it out yet. You have no clue. This is this is so much. Like I remember uh, the '07 bubble and how bad uh, they missed everything. This is this is worse because. This is an inflationary bubble, right? The 07 bubble was more like a deflationary bubble, wasn't it? Because it was housing-based and housing. This is an inflationary bubble, and there's no let-up here. 
You know, when we talk about entitlement programs, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, the the amount of money being added to the debt from those, there's not enough there. We're not collecting enough as it is, and it only gets worse every single year. And I don't see how this debt slows down, Jason. Right? How does it slow down? And that's the problem. Right, the, the 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 path here. No matter what they do with interest rates, look at what's happening now. The Fed hasn't raised interest rates in almost a year, and yet the ten-year notes near near the highs that it's been for literally almost like since this millennial. I mean, maybe in the early two thousands we had a ten-year note in the sevens, maybe. Right, I don't even know if we did, but. You know, 5% or near 5%, that's like the highest it's been in 20-plus in years. It's getting expensive, Joe. It is getting expensive. I'm just looking at the prices of things. You know, you can almost look at this stuff. You almost look at this stuff on a, on a, on a week-to-week or a month-to-month basis. And prices are going up monthly. Prices are being adjusted monthly. This isn't a quarterly thing anymore. It's a monthly thing. Pretty soon it will be monthly weekly, Joe. Day. The insurance companies, oh my gosh, you living in the wrong state. Heck, they're packing up and leaving, saying we're not even going to do insurance anymore. 800-951-0592. You guys have no idea. You know, already, already, Janet Yellen, gosh, this woman, how did she get so powerful? Remember, a uh, big supporter of the global minimum tax on corporations. Remember that? Right? Remember. First, think about this. It was just, oh, my gosh, it's so unfair. We can't compete with all these other countries. And, and we need to lower the taxes so American companies can compete. Now it's, oh, no, man, we got to have a, a minimum tax. Like, like every company has to pay X amount plus. And, and guess what? All of you debtor nations, you're all going to want to get on board on this. Now, the Wall Street Journal says they've got a new plan. The global wealth tax. Yeah, get ready. Listen, in the next, here's what I'm going to guarantee you. Between now and 2030, the tax rates are going to skyrocket for everything. Now, they're always going to make it look like you poor people. And granted, the poor people now, there's a lot more of them them now because there will be a new level of poor in this country. I don't know if it will be 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 property taxes. Uh, I'll call it the vice taxes, right? The alcohol tax, the cigarette tax, sporting events tax, rent-a-car tax, city tax, state tax, this tax, that tax, wealth tax, Mm -hmm. global wealth tax, climate tax, you name it, the taxes are coming. Uh, Apparently now the United States, along with uh, several other G20 nations, would like to impose a 2% wealth tax on the world's billionaires. Yes, that, that, that's going to fix it, right? I, what, what, they love 2%, don't they, Jason? It seems like that's because they just make these numbers up anyway. Well, well, let's just go 2%, right? So think about this. Well, wait a minute. i got to pay my state tax, my federal tax. Now i got to pay my global tax, right? By the end of the day, they're going to ensure that... that Everybody has nothing except a very few. Yeah, and there's uh, the, the, the new thing that the government's proposing that was at the 46% on the, the wealthy tax. But what's worse in that package is uh, the 25% unrealized gain tax, which is in there, oh, yeah. which means if, if, you're a, if you're a stockholder or you're a crypto holder, you know, most people that own crypto, they're holding it in, in an exchange. And they, and they keep records. Your, your name, all your identification to be in that exchange, it's all there. So you can sit there and hold your Bitcoin and watch it go up. 
And I, and I don't know how it works, Joe. Is it 25% of holding it? Does that mean the next year you pay another 25%? I really don't. I haven't looked at the exact rules, but the unrealized gains tax that is a part of this package coming in, nobody wants to talk about that part. They're looking at the 46% rich tax. Well, that's all well and good. We've dealt with that stuff before, but not the unrealized gains tax. Man, does holding on to gold and silver seem like the smartest, best thing you could ever do right now because only you need to know how many ounces of gold you're holding, right, Joe? Well, I'm telling you right now, the they've talked about this unrealized gains thing. Uh, you know, normally you pay taxes when you sell it, right? Because you haven't realized a gain until you sell. And you're, you're right. holding on to the risk. You're holding on to the risk of holding right. that asset. And you hold the risk, right? Because, you know, you don't know. And now they're saying, well, we want to start taxing that. Do you know there's only 3,000 billionaires in the entire world? That's it. That's all there is. We got 8 billion people, and there's 3,000 of them. And why do I get the feeling most of them probably are in China? Uh, but, but yes, uh, who's for this? Oh, you guessed it. Oh, Janet Yellen thinks it's a great idea. It's Here's what she says. Ready for this? Because this tells you they already know how bad the problem is 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 going to be how fast it's coming she called this a necessary third pillar so what what social security medicare that's a pillar right they call that a pillar right i don't know what all the pillars are but apparently this is a necessary third pillar that complements the negotiation on the taxation of the digital economy. Whoops, what? Oh, you think she just slipped that in there? That was a slip of the tongue, a Freudian slip? No, no, come on, guys. Wake up. A minimum corporate tax of 15% for all multinational corporations, as well as a 2% tax on you billionaires out there. Uh, and, and it's just one of these things, Jason, where this is where we're going. You, know, you look at uh, the agreement with the World Health Organization, you know, the next pandemic, they get to tell us who can go where and who can get on a plane and who can do this. And now uh, with our quote-unquote G20 uh, guys, we're going to set up uh, tax requirements for multinational corporations and, of course, you know, the, the billionaires. And what happens when the billionaires, it's millionaires, right? And, and, and it just keeps going higher and higher. Look at 2% inflation. They say they want it, but they actually aren't going to do anything to get it, are they? No, they can meaningfully just raise the interest rates and break the markets and, and, uh, and better yet, just step out of the way and just, just, just uh, give back the banking right back to the country, back to the Treasury. Then we can get rid of Janet Yellen and things will get better. But no, that's going to happen. So they see the inflation. They want the inflation. Joe, I mean, the average middle class, uh, whatever that's considered nowadays, they hold some stocks. And then a lot of these guys are getting into cryptos and other things. I, I can't imagine, Joe... Uh, you, you, you've jumped on Bitcoin, it's 40000 then it, it moves up to seventy. let Let's say by the end of the year it has a great year, it's at 150000 like a lot of these guys predict. And then you come into the next year, it's like, okay, well, here's your, here's your 25% you know, un, unrealized gains tax. Yep. Right? Okay, yeah, just, just give us $25,000. And then what does crypto, what, if, what if Bitcoin just crashes? Because like, everybody gets hit with the tax, like, well, I ain't going to keep my money in here. Now all the crypto money goes right into gold. Can you imagine what gold does at that point? Ten thousand dollar gold, you get all that you know, money. You just... Same thing with stocks, right? Why would they do it if you got wealth greater than a hundred million dollars? An inclusive, unrealized capital gains tax, a minimum tax yep. of twenty five percent of your total income. That doesn't even include what you're going to pay state and locally. Uh, the wealthiest pack taxpayers pay 25% of their total income. Uh, you know, people are like, hey, you know, they don't even know what they're going to do to the, the economy when, when you do things like this. How about the inheritance tax? Oh, yeah. That's part of the 2025 budget. Oh, yeah, you know, it was. I know that we used to lower that stuff. Yeah, not anymore. And, of course, the long. Gains tax, yeah, like Facebook.
Bears talking. They want it 46 percent. I think they're going to will it. They're willing to settle for 40 percent. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot News Hour. Joe and Jason. We started the show talking about, hey, the Fed and the Treasury got to work it out so the Treasury can pretend not to increase the auction sizes at least, you know, at least for six months. The record levels of debt that that are here. Uh, we've got Treasuries acting like memes. We got currencies acting like meme stocks. This tax plan, it's going to get so much worse. Before we get into, because I want to I want to tell you all the other things they want to do. We're not done. We're not done. But we've got a, a little house cleaning here here at Patriot. We 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 collect things uh, over time and and uh, we need to, to get rid of them, right? Because there's just not enough of them to go around. But a little clean out the vault here. We've got 100 one-ounce silver bars. I don't have any more. And I thought I was going to run them and, and I could get more. I can't. They're just out of stock everywhere. I've got 100 one-ounce silver bars. And they're one of the big names, Sunshine or whatever. You know, they're, they're, they're one-ounce silver bars. Nice-looking. They're $32. You want to buy all 100 of them, knock yourself out. You want to buy one, five, ten, whatever, at $32. I only have 100. I don't have any more. I know bars have gotten pretty popular lately. It's kind of interesting to see. Uh, we've got 10 quarter-ounce American Gold Eagles. We're going to run up at $625. That's less than cost. Right now, by the way, so, uh, gold's up three bucks right now, twenty three fifty. Less than cost for a quarter ounce of silver. I've only got ten. Gold. I don't have any gold. Sorry, thank you, Jason. <laughs> quarter ounce of gold. Yeah, that'd be. Hey, quarter ounce of silver is not six hundred twenty five dollars. Not yet, anyway. We also have three half ounce gold eagles. So double that price, six twenty five. Double it for a half ounce, twelve hundred and fifty dollars. 800-951-0592. Whatever we don't sell today, we're just going to dump back on the wholesaler. So if you want to take advantage of it, buy it. You're not going to get them at these prices. 800-951-0592. And get it put away. How long do you think Wall Street's going to stay at these bubble highs with all the things we already talked about? We're not done. The child tax credit, so for all the poor people, right? They're going to expand it through 2025, make it fully refundable. Remember, this was a Trump thing. It was supposed to expire. Now they're saying, well, not only do we need it to, to not expire, we need to cover even more people with it, right? That's the way to get you to go along. Because you're like, yes, tax the rich people. Tax them. As long as you oh, and give me something for free. Raising the corporate income tax in a simple way to raise revenue to pay for the what they're calling their fiscal priorities. Yes. See, in order to give all this money away to the poor people, all the other stuff, you guys gotta pay even more. Uh, but we'll, well, don't worry. I like how they do this. Administratively simple way to do it. Yeah, whatever that means. So uh, what does that mean? Well, more corporate tax. More corporate tax. Revise the global minimum tax regime and raise it to 21%. What happened to 15%? Well, that's gone. How about now... Global minimum, all, all the indebted nations all agree they all need to pay 21%. Well, what happens when that's on it? Well, we'll go to 25, then we'll go to 30. A new 25% minimum income tax imposed on this extremely wealthy, right? We talked about that. Uh, also, uh, some pass through business owners to avoid Medicare taxes would be eliminated. 
Remember what I told you, Medicare and Medicaid go broke first. Medicare tax rates would be increased? What? Oh. Hmm. See? I told you. Additional loopholes will be negated. And they, they list a bunch of loopholes that they have. Uh, the child tax credit, yeah, we're going to expand that for you poor people. So they got to, after they hit the corporates and, and the rich people, then they give away something to the poor people. Increase the tax rates on stock buybacks to 4%. You know what it was? I want to say it was 2%. And they always love to start with 2%, right, Jason? Now they're going to, right, because what are these companies like, well, we're going to buy back our stock. Well, Let's put more taxes on that, Jason. Uh, the list goes on. There's so many more. I, I don't. I can't even uh, go through them all. I'm scrolling. This thing's like ten pages long of how many different tax increases, and this is all for next year's budget. Yeah, I, the tax stuff's going to get so bad. And, and if anyone listening, when, when you, anytime you hear corporate tax. Just think prices for you to buy things are just got it more expensive because that's all it is. There's no such thing as a corporate tax. I don't think, I don't understand what these, what anybody doesn't understand about that. A business adds up the expense and then sells the product. Why is it a nine ninety nine for a quarter pound of the cheese in, in California? Because they added up all the expense and they sell the product at a price where they get their margin. And obviously, if you have a $20 minimum wage on the employees at McDonald's, that's going to raise the price of your quarter pounder. Corporate tax means more expensive for you. It's going to add to the inflation. All, this is all inflation-driven, Joe, everything you talked about. All of this. And guess what? Here's the sad part. They keep wanting to spend money. None of this is with, with any spending cuts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right? This is, this is just better. In fact, a bunch of, they got a bunch of spending increases. Got it. It's 100, 100 one ounce silver bars, $32. 10 quarter ounce gold eagles, $625. 3 half ounce gold eagles at $1250. 800 592 When we get back, I'm going to be. 800 I'll, I'll try to give you the highlights here. Top marginal rate on long-term capital gains jumps to 44.6%. What can you imagine? Hey, I know you made a bunch of gains in the stock market, but uh, we're going to take 50%. Well, 40, 44.6% of it. Thank you. Deductions for oil and gas companies eliminated. Hmm. Let's see. Is that going to make things cheaper? Oh, no. Your power bill isn't high enough. Your, <laughs> what you're paying for, for gas isn't high enough. Wait till you got to plug your car in. Wait till you see what that bill looks like. A 30% tax on electric uh, electricity used for mining cryptos. Yeah, sure. Uh, why not, right? Yeah, I'm sure that's going to help that space. Restrictions on conversions to Roth IRAs. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Uh, we don't want you guys to be able to somehow not pay taxes. Forced accelerations of IRA withdrawals. Right. Hey, we need our money, right? We, we need our money. Taxes on insurance policies. What? Wait a minute. I'm being smart. I'm buying insurance. Well, there's a tax for that. <laughs> Come on, man. Why are you doing that? You don't need that, right? Spend your money. Don't 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 actually save. Don't actually plan. We're going to expand the child tax credit. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, let's face it. All the illegals and their kids need need money. So there you go. Earned income tax credit includes those with no kids. <laughs> Well, you're poor. They get you're poor, but you don't have kids. Here, here's some money, right? I mean, that's that's what that is. Yep. Restrictions on trust to avoid inheritance taxes. A corporate minimum tax. There's still a home buyer tax credit. Of course, only rich people can buy a home. Twenty five percent tax on unrealized stock gains for wealthy individuals. Yeah, I'm sure. 
I'm sure Wall Street's going to love that one. A marginal Medicare tax rate up to 5%. I don't know uh, what it, it is currently, but get ready. You're going to pay more. Tax rate for C corporations goes to 28% from 21%. The global intangible lower tax rate would increase to 14%. I mean, this. Get your gold and silver put away before they tax the hell out of whatever money you've got left. We have 100 one-ounce silver bars, whatever is remaining at $32. We had 10 quarter-ounce gold eagles. We got two lines open. We got gold, gold, quarter-ounce gold eagles below cost at $625. We got three half-ounce gold eagles, same thing, at $1,250. 800 951 And here's the problem, Jason. Not all of these things are going to get through. But over the next, say, let's just say that over the next six years, all of the things I just mentioned, quadruple them. Because that's probably what it's going to take to, to have any sense of, of being able to justify. Because even with all this stuff, when you're talking deficit. Three, four, five trillion dollar a year debts are coming to the United States. You know, David Walker talked about the tipping point. I think we're getting right near it, aren't we? And and what what's left the tax, right? That's gonna be the thing. Wherever your money is, they're coming for it. Jason and I, listen, we're coming right back with the half empty cup. Don't touch that dot.